Hey yo, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens, it's Omni Dog here with Omni Dogs Vault. And today, <clears throat> excuse me, it's late at night, so I don't have iced coffee or root beer or iced tea or anything. So this is a root beerless review, but I'm going to be talking about Red Hulk. And I'm going to have to keep it short because look at how many books are in this series by Jeff Parker. Um, it is a there are one, two, three, four, five, six, eight books in all. And so I'm going to just try and summarize what's going on in each book. The bottom line, I enjoyed the entire run. And I especially enjoyed Red She-Hulk, the last two books in Jeff Parker's Red Hulk run. So what is Red Hulk about? Well, Red Hulk is Thunderbolt Ross which is ironic because I'm not spoiling it for anybody that was a big surprise a few years ago he spent his career General Ross did tracking down and trying to capture and kill the Hulk himself and then he ends up becoming a Hulk too a Red Hulk so in this one he has he's been a bad bit of a bad guy before apparently I just dropped in for Red Hulk I didn't drop in for any of the Jeff Lubb Jeff Leb, um, Loeb, whatever his name is. I didn't drop in for any of the Red Hulk, Green Hulk, Battle, Fall of the Hulks, any of that stuff. This is a Riley Moore recommendation. The Omnibus Collector uh, himself recommended this book, recommended this book, so I picked it up to read it. Um, and it, it's, um, you don't have to know what's going on ahead of time to enjoy this book. Uh, each book has a recap and it's got a good description on the back. Uh, Red Hulk was in the thrall of um, Modoc and uh, the leader. That's right, Modoc and the leader and was kind of a bad guy. But now under the direction of Captain America, he is now a good guy and wants to fight on the side of the good guys but the good guys don't know it yet, so he spends the first half of this book getting beaten up by Iron Man and Thor and Namor until they realize he's actually a good guy. <laughs> so that's actually kind of fun seeing him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. But it's more than just fights, although there are plenty of good monster fights and hero fights. Um, and because uh, he's he's uh, misunderstood, of course, and he's trying to stop the apop apocalyptic plans put forth by the leader and Modoc. And they're also the blue guy right there is Rick Jones, also known as A Bomb. So he's a bit of a blue Hulk. Um, it's all very action packed. Uh, the art is good throughout. This book, this first book is called Scorched Earth, and you see Thor on the cover there. Um, it's full of uh, various watchers. You see a lot of uh, our watcher and the culture of watchers, so that's pretty interesting. I found that really interesting. Uh, they go to Monster Island, as I said, uh, with A Bomb, and I think the um, they uh, you see. Red Hulk accidentally touch a watcher which is forbidden that has something to ends up having something to do with a creature from a red hole that's created instead of a black hole it's a red hole uh, this creature it goes into explicit detail about how this creature is created he's called the Omega X and he sets out after Red Hulk um, that goes throughout the entire series um, but he's a bit of a doomsday weapon that um, captures Hulk's Red Hulk's scent near the Red Hole um, it's actually really interesting how this Omega X is created um, and he's now on his way to Earth he's an ultimate doomsday uh, machine and he's on his way to Earth to uh, do battle with Red Hulk uh, as I say, it's full of interesting Watcher stuff, the creation of a red hole. So this first book is actually really good, called Scorched Earth. The next book is called Planet Red Hulk. And as you might guess, 
Hulk is in space in this one, um, and he um, helps a race of people defend themselves and becomes ruler of this planet for a while. Uh, this also, of course, uh, it has the whole series has really good art all the way through it. Um, this issue features the creation of sort of a hybrid human computer ethereal creature called Zero One. She's important because in her mind she needs to destroy Red Hulk um, because he was there at her creation and she's like a computer a binary type thinker and so she's after red hulk now too besides omega x and lots of people on earth um who else is after red hulk general fordian who used to be best buds with general ross but he blames red hulk for the death of general ross not knowing that red hulk is general ross there's a twist in the book he implants little um micro uh, bombs in Red Hulk's form so that when he turns human again, Red Hulk, the bombs go off and destroy him. So he's got to stay Red Hulk for a while till they can figure out. He's got a, Red Hulk has a team of people that help him, artificial intelligence uh, people that help him. So he's got to stay Red Hulk for a while because if he becomes human, he gets destroyed. Um, Let's see, I covered Zero One. Zero One has, uh, a, is an interesting character. I liked her creation a lot. She has kind of a group of um, allies with her that she's sort of created that help her in her quest to find and destroy Red Hulk. So Red Hulk has his hands full. There's lots of people after him, uh, other creatures, all kinds of weird creatures that are after him. And it's uh, really fun to see how he battles them. It's not just battles. He also, you know, has a very human side. He's a sentient Hulk, so he's always thinking. Um, and he's very strong, very strong and resilient, um, as Hulks tend to be. And after that book comes Fear Itself with Hulk and Dracula. You can't. Um, not read this book because it's in continuity for the whole thing. I did not read the Fear Itself event, but you don't need to worry about that. It's all summed up very nicely before the book starts. Um, let's see. It's, it's all recapped in the intro. Um, the Red Hulk battles a hammer-wielding thing. The thing, I, I guess the Fear Itself uh, central conceit is that they all get these hammers like uh, Thor-like hammers that sort of corrupt them and make them into these fear-wielding um, meta-human, meta-meta super-powered people that are hard to defeat. Um, and so here we get a picture of what the thing looks like. Uh, while he possesses the hammer, they become these um, uh, unstoppable almost unstoppable creatures of fear with these hammers um, and uh, we've got the reappearance of zero one <clears throat> she's a good character other battles happen but the most interesting thing that happens is with right here we've got red hulk with his ai companion uh, he is supported by a group of artificial intelligence uh, humanoids and he starts to develop feelings for this one can't remember her name but that's not really that important because uh, you'll figure it out once you read it here's a picture of Omega X and one of the watchers uh, who's assigned to the case because Earth's watcher goes missing and the other watchers are trying to figure out where he is Uatu or however you say his name uh, the fear itself story here's a picture of zero one what she looks like, the sort of um, computer-generated, ethereal, human hybrid type thing. She's a good character. I really liked her a lot. Um, Fear Itself storyline is actually pretty good. I, uh, you, uh, I know Fear Itself gets a bad rap uh, as, a, as an event, but um, the Fear Itself storyline is actually very good. And in this book, also, Dracula is there. 
um, with a group of people, sorry, a <laughs> group of vampires that um, are in the Fear Itself arc and Dracula needs to rally all his vampire troops to defeat the Hulk, the original Green Hulk, who is pictured here. He's been possessed by the uh, Fear Itself hammer and he goes after uh, the vampires. And so that's an interesting storyline too because um, uh, of the alliances Dracula has to make with some unsavory characters called the Forgiven. Um, they are outcast vampires, but he needs to get them uh, on his side in order to defeat the big green hammer-wielding Hulk. So that's a good story too. I enjoyed that story. Next, we have up Hulk of Arabia in the Red Hulk saga. Uh, Red Hulk goes to the Middle East to avenge a friend's death. And no surprise, he finds himself in the middle of a war. Um, Machine Man is in this and is in this for the rest of the story. And that's cool because Machine Man is a good defense against Zero One. And he needs Machine Man's help. Machine Man is a great character in this book who um, adds a lot to the story. And we get um, the Arabian Knight or whatever his name is. I think that's what it is. He's the uh, superhero in the region. And it's interesting because uh, a demagogue in the Middle East has acquired alien technology that helps him build an empire there and... That's what Hulk of Arabia ends up getting mixed up in is this guy's, um, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a bad guy and he creates um, uh, a, a dictatorship right there in the middle of the uh, Middle East and Hulk is trying to defeat him uh, but the guy ends up dis establishing diplomatic relations with the UN or something and so the Hulk can't really defeat him but they go through all kinds of interesting things with this alien technology that the guy has equipped himself with and the alien technology plays a huge part in it uh, it also is a good story um, uh, because uh, mostly of Machine Man who's great here you see him pop his head off and his, his head is still operating his body's still operating and he's off to do something else and uh, this Red Hulk story is really good too and then we come up to Red Hulk Haunted the next in this series by Jeff Parker uh, this they all have excellent art in them here we see zero one back in full force and um, with uh, a bunch of sea monsters so <laughs> it's fun to see red hulk battle a bunch of sea monsters um he's also got a spirit this red hulk does that is sort of latched on to him and haunts him through the whole book he eventually goes to dr strange to try and figure out who this spirit is why this spirit is after him why the spirit tags along the spirit hasn't done him any harm yet but he is haunting him which is why it's called haunted um so um there's all kinds of fun occult spookiness in this book including the legion of monsters um including like werewolf by night and morbius and the mummy and some sea creature and the Eternals are in it, and Hercules. So it's a supernatural slugfest, as the book says in the back. Um, I love this book, too. It's This series is all about action. If you like action comic books, you will like this, because these books are all action-packed, but it's not just a slugfest. There's a lot of heart in it, too. And the last book of Red Hulk is Mayan Rule. And I thought, in my opinion, to me, this was the, the best book of the Red Hulk books. Um, Mayan gods return to Earth and want to rule it. Uh, in it, you have A-Bomb, Alpha Flight, and Machine Man, and a couple of She-Hulks 
that are in it, which is an interesting storyline. The She-Hulks have a very interesting storyline, both of them. How are there two? Well, you read this and you will find out why there are two She-Hulks. Um, this book is fun because it has all kinds of Mayan gods and Mayan culture in it and talking monkeys and Red Hulk in the jungle. Machine Man is, is great throughout it. And eventually, Zero One... Um, I, well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to spoil it about Zero One. Um, but Mayan Rule is a really good book. I enjoyed this a lot. And that is the end of the Red Hulk part of the Jeff Parker run. Excellent read. Red, Red Hulk is great. I t totally recommend it. Here's what I recommend even more. Once you're done with that, you need to pick up Red She-Hulk. The Red She-Hulk is, these are my two favorite books. Something about uh, awesome, powerful women I think is great. And Red She-Hulk, who is Betty Ross, um, General Ross's or Red Hulk's daughter. Uh, she's exposed to some gamma rays in some of the books or a combination of gamma and other rays. And she's battling with the Avengers during this. She... Now this is really cool. There is a space that exists, and let me see if I uh, get it right. It's called the Terahedron, I think. Ter no, Terranometer. It's a world computer, and it it exists in kind of a different space. And there's a little girl who can channel that and tell the future. And Red She Hulk comes into contact with her sees what the future is and is racing to stop it and on her way here's a picture of the world computer and the surprise host of this world computer is there in the shadows um red uh she read <laughs> she read red she hulk um has been in touch with this girl and um with machine man is is racing to change the future because it's the end of the world of course and this uh, book is full of snappy dialogue and witty banter and traveling in um, all around the place here she completely hulks out right there one of the few times she totally hulks out um, love this book I love this book a lot and then we come upon the last book in the Red Hulk series and it's Red She-Hulk Route 616 uh, the name of this one is Hell Hath No Fury that's the first one and this one is Route 616 because she and Machine Man hijack a bunch of cool cars and are racing across the country um, to try and outrace the US military and shield as they try and prevent the future that wipes out humanity um, there are a lot of realities at play here. Um, you've got to sort of do a good job of suspending your disbelief. There are a wide variety of uh, realities that involve that world computer, the Tyranometer, if I'm saying that right. Um, here you can see one of the realities is altered where um, you've got Mount Rushmore but then all of a sudden, it's got faces of Red Skull and Loki and Doctor Doom uh, and Ultron. And so she blinks in and out of realities to where these guys are in charge. So that's a lot of fun, too. Um, and it deals a lot with this Eleanor Bennett little girl who is the one that channels the world computer. Um, I love this book. I, I love the strong female protagonist. I think Betty Ross is um, also She-Hulk's in it. I, I just love uh, Betty Ross in this book. Her character's interesting and complex, and uh, it's a good, uh, not twist, but it's a good little hook that she's in touch with this little girl that can channel the world computer. So I highly recommend all of Red Hulk, including Red She-Hulk. It's a lot of books. There's eight books. Red She-Hulk is still in print. The other books are not in print, but they're cheap on Amazon. In some cases, 
the shipping was more than the book. So you can get them really easily on Amazon and it is, we'll go through it again before I end this video, so you know, it's Scorched Earth, Planet Red Hulk, Fear Itself Hulk Dracula, Hulk of Arabia, Haunted, Mayan Rule, Red She-Hulk Hell Hath No Fury, and Red She-Hulk Route 616. So my thanks to Riley Moore for alerting me to this great series. I highly recommend it to you, Omni Cats, sorry, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. I recommend it to you. I think you would enjoy it. It's very fun, very well written, very well drawn. The art's great throughout it. So, until next vid, I hope you stuck with me. This is my longest vid ever. I apologize, but that was a lot of books. So, peace and love, peace and love, and um, subscribe, hit the like button, and comment if you like. I, rec I respond to all comments. Take care. Don't brush your hair. Whatever. Bye.